So, <laughs> I am out on the beautiful Isle of Wight taking you for a walk with me uh, so we can have a chat and catch up and uh, talk a little bit about what audio producers get up to outside the studio, particularly when uh, you're low on creativity or you need to top up your creativity. I always find that a walk in nature really helps. So uh, I am out right now exploring the fields, uh, still a little bit of mud around, but that's okay. I'll be able to skip over that and get to one of my favorite trees on the Isle of Wight, which is just over there. Yeah, it's a beautiful big oak tree. So let's get through all of this mud and walk towards it. So if you want to ask any questions, I'll do a bit of a, a Q&A with anyone who would like to, to hop in right now and ask some questions. Hi there, Paul Orr, good to see you. I'm testing some cool gear out as well. So let me know what you think of the gear. Um, how is the image stabilization? I'm not actually using a gimbal at the moment. I'm using uh, an N-Power selfie stick, uh, which is uh, holding my Samsung Galaxy S8. Uh, I've got it plugged into an anchor power bank. Uh, that's supposed to give me uh, loads and loads of energy because otherwise this would probably run out after 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, and then for the microphone, don't know if you can see it, it's just, uh, just there. That's the Rode SmartLav Plus. Looks and sounds great, low wind noise. That's good because I can certainly feel a lot of wind on me. So really pleased to hear that, Paul. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, stick them in the chat. And like I say, I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A and show you what I get up to when I'm not inside the recording studio. So for instance, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of trees, like this one here. Uh, this is a gorgeous little tree. Uh, actually, it's not really that little, is it? But it's, uh, it's lovely. So uh, yeah, big believer that trees have lots of good energy and lots of knowledge and they know things that we don't. So uh, kind of hanging out under this tree right now in the shade, which looks rather fantastic. So I see there's some of you watching live now. Obviously this will be available on replay. So if you've got any questions you want to ask, uh, stick them in the chat. I should be able to see them. Uh, I can see you there watching. Paul Orr has just commented. So as long as the video and audio is looking good, how is the, uh, I'm curious to know how the stabilization is on my Samsung Galaxy S8. By default, it actually has a little bit of stabilization on itself. Beach sunglasses. <laughs> That's right, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. Oh, we've got El Captino. It does look and sound good. Isle of Wight, hey? You're one of the few YouTubers who create from the island. I know, and look at that. There should be more videos coming out of the Isle of Wight because this is a beautiful place. In fact, I'm just getting to a place right now called Culver View, uh, which is a spot where you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see it just behind me in the distance, somewhere over there, there is the Lord Yarborough Monument, which is nice. Super stable, that's amazing, uh, without using a gimbal. So I'm, I'm currently debating at the moment um, whether to get a gimbal uh, to stabilize my image. I can see certainly in the, uh, in the reflection I'm getting over there that it's a little bit shaky. Um, but yeah, that's something I'm considering getting my hands on. Uh, there is the Zune Crane version two that I've been looking at. Uh, it's uh, fairly pricey, but for what it does, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's uh, 399 pounds, British pounds. So uh, you can stick a cat that because that means I can turn away. I should be able to turn away like that. And you should be able to hear me clearly, which if I was using the Samsung Galaxy S8 camera. Hi to you. I'm taking you on a walk in nature here on the Isle of Wight to show you uh, what certain audio producers, myself included, get up to when we're not producing. Uh, we get out and we climb beautiful styles like this one. <laughs> so I'm going to take you over the style. And like I say, this will be uh, something for you. If you like it, by the way, if this is something you'd like to see more of on my channel, do let me know in the comments, either live or on the replay, and maybe we can make that happen. Like I said, I've just been looking at some, some gear to do more of this kind of stuff. Hello from Israel. I got Daniel in there. Hey there. I'm comparing all the videos, <laughs> oh, all of these to my videos. Nice. Nice to see so many of you in the chat. So get asking some questions. Maybe I'll answer some questions in just a minute. Um, yeah, so I was having some conversations at Pod Summit, in, including an awesome conversation with uh, Eric Philpot from Adobe. Uh, so hello to you, Eric, if you're watching, uh, who suggested it may be interesting to uh, consider the possibility 
uh, of doing a bit more uh, vlogging. So uh, yeah, I'm going to test this out and uh, do let me know your thoughts. Hi from India. Hello there to you watching in India. Uh, this is the beautiful Isle of Wight. It's uh, lunchtime and I'm going on one of my favourite walks at the moment around the island. So yeah, I kind of need to get up to scratch on all the, uh, the good stuff for vlogging. And I can see it's definitely, the image is shaking a bit from my uh, walking motion. And who have we got here? Tara Support, uh, tuning in from Pakistan. Nice to see you there. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. Uh, doing a bit more of this vlog style, taking you around. Look, that, that over there. Navad's in, hi to you. What platforms am I on right now? So YouTube is my main, that's my number one. Uh, and it has been my number one focus since the start of this year, 2018. I'm just completely and utterly pumping all my energy into YouTube. Uh, I think I'm just about to hit the 90K mark in subscribers. So I'm super pleased about that. And I really want to get my, uh, my silver play button. <laughs> just another 10,000. <laughs> Come on, share. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to show you over here. This is one of the biggest uh, solar farms. Uh, that's right, yeah, Daniel absolutely just spotted that. One of the biggest solar farms here on the Isle of Wight that I'm just passing by right now. <laughs> I always think it looks like Alice in Wonderland and the decks of cards <laughs> all lined up. Uh, so yeah, this gives a considerable amount of energy uh, to the nearby towns and villages here. And uh, well, you can see why. Where is the sun in the sky? It's like, it's there, it's behind my head. So there's loads of sun here on the island. In fact, the Isle of Wight happens to be the sunniest place in the United Kingdom. That's why I chose to live here. Because <laughs> I really like the UK, but I also really like sun. So this was a fantastic choice, I think, in terms of uh, lifestyle design. We also have solar farms in Israel. Absolutely, it's a brilliant source of power. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased to see it. This used to obviously just be fields before, and there was no fence. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm happy of it. It brings good, clean energy to the island. Uh, really nice. So yeah, in a second, I'm going to get to a, a place where I can cross over another style and take you on a beautiful path. I probably shouldn't have put this hoodie on today. It's about 16, 17 degrees today on the Isle of Wight. So it's beautiful. So yeah, just come back from Canada, uh, from the wonderful Pod Summit. Uh, do I charge my house with solar? No, but it's a good idea. It should get upgraded get myself off the grid. I kind of like that idea. That's a good idea. In Canada, I went to Edmonton, I went to Calgary, I went, to, well, I flew through Toronto and I went to the Rocky Mountains, which were fantastic. Toys Fun Fam uh, say, is that mic wireless or uh, cable? Uh, this uh, has a cable actually. So yeah, it's, it's just long enough that I can stretch out like that can stretch quite far away, uh, but it's not wireless. No, it is wired. Um, obviously, if you want to go super pro, something like the Sennheiser EW100 uh, would be a good choice, I reckon, uh, for doing uh, distance shooting and such like. But like I say, I'm just kind of testing this out right now uh, on my smartphone. Uh, and Daniel, no, I'm not using an iPhone. I used to be an iPhone fanboy. I used to absolutely love iPhones. Um, but yeah, I kind of went off iPhone, so I'm Android now. Paul, is podcast business growing quickly? Uh, I didn't catch the rest of your question. Sometimes they flick by uh, quite fast. Uh, yeah, podcasting, certainly. Oh, look at that. A field ready to, uh, to grow something beautifully nice. Um, as far as I'm aware, podcasting is growing and growing and growing. Uh, my pick is too bright. Sorry about that, Daniel. Uh, uh, are we opposed to terrestrial? Am I opposed to terrestrial? Absolutely not. That's where I got started. Uh, as I'm, I'm sure you know, Paul, I started in radio and uh, had some fantastic days there. Do I think radio is changing? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the whole game is changing for radio and uh, a lot of radio groups now are trying to keep up with uh, all the developments in podcasting and the fact that you can get on-demand people listening in uh, whenever and you can sell sponsorships that live forever. Uh, whereas radio, it's a, it's a different kettle of fish, fish at the moment, isn't it? Right, let's get over this next style. Let me see whether I can show you this over here. There's another one. I like climbing styles. It gives me style, which is something I definitely need more of. Ah, and running water down there, beautiful. Okay, by the way, if you wanna know, that's where we are right now. <laughs> 
So uh, I can go this way or that way. What do they grow in that field? You know, I've got no idea what they grow. No idea. Oh, it's nice to see that Nightbot's in, uh, telling you to join the community. Nightbot even joins a live stream when I'm <laughs> out walking on the Isle of Wight. Can't get away from Nightbot. Uh, so yeah, but podcasting is definitely where it's at at the moment with regards to on-demand audio and creating audio shows. So the reason I'm testing this gear all out, and I will be interested to hear your feedback, so do let me know what you think of the, uh, the image stabilization and the audio quality from my Rode Smart Lab Plus is this weekend on Sunday, May 13, is uh, an annual event that happens on the island every year called Walk the White. And that's another thing I like to do to get out of my studio because I find it helps with creativity. It's too easy, I'm on the Isle of Wight right now. And this weekend, they, uh, hundreds, possibly thousands of people walk across the island, which is 26 miles in length. So it's kind of like walking a marathon. Some people run it, <laughs> and that's not like running a marathon because it's not just flat, it's over loads and loads of hills. Our island is very hilly. Oh, in a moment we're coming up to a beautiful view spot, so I'll, uh, I'll stop and show you around in a moment. So yeah, I wanted to kind of test this gear out. In particular, I wanted to find out how good it's going to be uh, for vlogging on the go, because I was hoping to take you with me if it all works out this weekend for the whole walk. And I guess I, I can stream it here live on YouTube, which would be quite fun. Uh, yeah, and we can walk across the island together, providing the mobile signal holds out, which is the other thing, of course. Uh, but we've generally got pretty good 4G here. What's in the gear? So it's MPOW selfie stick, nothing fancy, no gimbal. Rode Smart Lab Plus, Samsung Galaxy S8, and a beautiful anchor power pack uh, that is providing power I also wanted to test if it's possible to run my Strava app in the background while I go live on YouTube from the same device. So as well as uh, chewing through some battery to do this live video, I'm also chewing through battery uh, to uh, record my GPS signal constantly. So we'll see how that works out. All right, this is a nice spot to stop and just have a pan around. There you go, just over there. That's Portsmouth, which of course is uh, part of the mainland UK. So you can see Portsmouth from here, which is really nice. Thank you, it's too easy. That's very nice of you to say that. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions at all and I will be happy to answer them as we go on this uh, lovely walk around the Isle of Wight. It is amazing. Impressed with a mic. Yeah, it is great, isn't it? And it's always good to test different mics and find out which are going to be the best for you. Paul is asking something about the walk, but Paul, I just missed your question. So if you can post that back, that would be great. I know why it is looking great today, isn't it? It's looking fantastic. Weather's been like this for the whole, we've had a bank holiday weekend. So it's been brilliant for this whole bank holiday weekend. And uh, yeah, a lot of people have been having barbecues, getting out and about, enjoying the sights. But yeah, podcasting to answer your question is really growing. And in Canada, I've just come back from over 100 inspired uh, folks in Canada at the conference. Uh, yeah, it can do 1080p. In fact, I think my S8 can do 4K as well, which is pretty cool. In the, uh, the Pod Summit conference organized by the fantastic Ernest Barbaric, uh, we covered topics such as podcast monetization, uh, finding sponsors for your show, obviously the right gear that you're gonna need. I did a masterclass on podcast audio production which was really fun. Wondering if the family was joining you for the walk. Hope my daughter's doing well. Yes, thank you very much. We are, we're doing well. Uh, we're getting into our, our new way of normal life. Uh, my daughter Zara, at six years old, uh, just recently been diagnosed with type one diabetes. So we're readjusting to that. Uh, I don't think she'll be joining us for the whole walk across the island, but there is, uh, there's a children's walk. There's a couple of children's walks. Uh, so we're hoping uh, that she'll be able to do uh, that one, which is good. So this mic is the Rode Smart Lab Plus. I'm glad to hear it sounding really clear. Uh, yeah, but thanks for asking about Zara Paul. Really appreciate that. And she is, uh, she's adjusting better than us, actually. Definitely adjusting better than us. I think kids are great. They're so resilient, aren't they? 
uh, Frankie says, are any of the Pod Summit uh, lectures online? Not as far as I know, but I know plenty of photos were captured. Uh, so you might be able to find some of those if you go to the official Twitter at Pod Summit. And um, there was uh, a little bit of video footage captured. I don't think full lectures were captured, um, but uh, I've certainly got a few clips from my uh, podcast production masterclass. And if you're interested, in it, and obviously if I, if I get permission to do that, I might uh, make a little short edit and uh, put that content online for you to watch. If that's something you're interested in, uh, just let me know in the chat. So you can see why I like this walk, can't you? <laughs> it's pretty amazing around here. It's just fields and fields and fields. Podcast monetization is what I'm interested in, says Franca Philip. Absolutely. What are you doing at the moment, Franca, to monetize your podcast? Let me know in the chat. There are obviously various ways selling your products or services, probably up there with the number one. Um, but fantastic new technology, actually. I met with um, Rob Greenley uh, from Spreaker when I was out there at Pod Summit in Canada. Uh, had a nice catch up with Rob. And obviously, as well as working with Spreaker, uh, there are now three different companies at Spreaker. Uh, Spreaker, by the way, for those of you watching, don't know what it is. It's a podcast hosting company, Spreaker.com. S-P-R-E-A-K-R, so speaker without the R at the, without the E at the end, Spreaker.com. You can host your own podcast there. They've got some really good pricing plans. I really like them. I personally use them. Um, but they um, fairly recently bought uh, or merged with Blog Talk Radio, so they've got that extra power and leverage behind them. And then on top of that, they've created another company called VoxNest. Peter says, that intrigues me too, would be great to find out more and how it's done. Yeah, great question. Hey, look at this uh, beautiful field here behind me. Wow, super yellow, isn't it? Actually, that's blowing out in color, isn't it? Try and get a good shot of that. Look at that, that's amazing, isn't it? So yeah, um, if you're into podcast monetization, then you'll definitely want to know about VoxNest uh, from Spreaker. In fact, um, one of the products they've created uh, from this uh, new company creation is a product called Dynamo, D-Y-N-M-O, I think it is. Uh, and with that, you are able to inject audio ads into your podcast, which is fantastic. So, and using special technology, they can serve up ads based on your geolocation, uh, your demographic, so your gender, your age, and all of that. And it is supposed to be a way of uh, making money from your podcast in a Google AdSense or a YouTube monetization style way. Because still, podcast space is very fragmented with all of this stuff. There is no one place that you can post and work with uh, to get your podcast monetized. Like you can on YouTube, it's really easy. You just click monetization on. And as long as you're a partner, I believe now with over 4,000 subscribers and a certain amount of watch hours, you can get uh, uh, paid out for your video creations on YouTube. So. We definitely need something like that in the podcasting space. And I think VoxNest and the Dynamo product are um, aiming to solve those, uh, those issues, those pain points. But actually, from what I understand, if you host with Spreaker anyway, you can do all that stuff natively inside Spreaker. So it might be you want to look straight into that without needing to use the, the middleman, as it were, if you host somewhere else like uh, Libsyn or Blueberry or maybe even SoundCloud. Uh, so I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is a great walk, actually. I'm really enjoying this. So do let me know if you'd like more vlog-style videos on my channel. It's definitely something I'm considering doing. Now, look here. This is really interesting. Let's just stop for a moment. We just started our podcast, Talk About Us in Trinidad. Podcast not very popular. Uh, yeah, but they, they definitely will be growing. I wanted to show you this fenced off place. This is a, a brand new house behind me. It was built only a few months ago, super duper. And it's right next to a deserted barn. Ooh, there are lots of spooky places on the Isle of Wight. It's supposed to be the most haunted island in the whole of the UK, which is quite funny. Videos have been immensely helpful. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you, Franka. There we go. Take a look in there. Now that, that's the place you want to live, right? 
right there. Not a bad view, but it's right next door to this place. <laughs> like a, a really, really crazy deserted barn, right? <laughs> now that's funny. Tell me, uh, by the way, I'm really curious, those of you watching right now, or maybe if you're watching on the replay, what kind of stuff would you like to hear me talking about on these uh, vlogs? If I was to do more uh, vlog style content like this, what kind of topics would you like to cover? How would you see this unfolding? Do miss your hour long daily shows, Mike. They were almost like a community catch up as well as tutorial. Great fun and used to make me laugh. Thank you for that. So yeah, I was definitely having a think about that because uh, you're not the only person that's mentioned to me uh, about how cool the one hour live streams were and how much you missed them. So I'm thinking of bringing something back. Um, I've got something big coming up uh, at the end of this month, which I'll tell you about in just a second. But first of all, I just wanted to show you this amazing and crazy cool psychedelic car. Wow. I mean, come on, seriously? Wow, amazing. <laughs> that is cool. Um, yeah, do, uh, do keep posting uh, comments and questions and I will do my best to get to them as quickly as I can in this stream. So yeah, uh, just to let you know what's big and what's coming up at the end of this month, on May 29th, we're launching a fantastic month-long promotion to celebrate Adobe Audition's 25th birthday. How many of you knew that Adobe Audition is 25 years old? It doesn't feel that long, but it certainly makes you feel old. Certainly if you were using the first uh, editions of uh, maybe even Cool Edit uh, back in, I think it was 95, 96, when Cool Edit first hit the scene. Video seems stabilized and isn't shaky. Uh, oh wow, okay, that's cool. So yeah, definitely a gimbal I think is the future. Very old fashioned car. Saw, says Paul. Yeah, I remember Saw. And Franka remembers Cool Edit. Do you remember using Sadie as well? What were the other great doors of the time? But yeah, Cool Edit was my introduction. That's why I'm Adobe Audition fanboy, because that's what I started with. The video stabilizer is not great. Thank you, yes. I'm definitely going to need to pick up a gimbal because it is very shaky and I can do better than this, I know. Uh, what have we got here? Can you do audio editing in Premiere instead of Audition? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, well you can, although I would recommend going over to Audition because it's uh, super fine grained and much easier. So you, you might benefit from editing in Adobe Audition or just what you can do is you can use Dynamic Link and you can move the audio out of Premiere into Audition do everything you need to do, and then just get it straight back into Premiere. In fact, in the latest version of Adobe Audition CC 2018, you can now edit Premiere Pro dot PR P R O O J files, Premiere Pro project files, which is cool. Can you record outside and provide good quality? Possibly. You get somewhere or you're only walking around, says Risty. Uh, no, I'm just, just walking around, just going for a walk, just showing you uh, what I get up to when I'm outside the studio. <laughs> so yeah, really good questions. Keep them coming. Um, we got Jason saying, uh, very green. I'm used to seeing you with a gray background. It is a nice change, isn't it? It's better if you move from the center. Right, okay, let's do my best. Am I an audio engineer? It's too easy. Um, I don't know what I call myself really, an audio. I think now we're getting known as audio creators really, aren't we? We're all, we're all one in this audio game. And I think audio creator is a kind of really nice name for what we do. Uh, but yeah, I do have a background of working in radio. I learned the, uh, the trade at many radio stations. So while I've not taken a, an official audio engineer course, uh, I do consider myself to, uh, to know a trick or two. There you go. Let's follow. Shall we follow this footpath? I think eventually it'll take us to the sea if you've got time. <laughs> Let's go down here. Whoa. Now this is where I could benefit from a stabilizer rummaging down here. So yeah, uh, just a second ago, I was telling you, is this a footpath? How weird. Am I going the right way? It is easy to get lost. Let's see. Down here, through here. God, I hope I'm going the right way. Um, yeah, no, I'm definitely, this is not the way I'm supposed to be going. Let me go back up here. So yeah, really super excited for May 29. It is Adobe Audition's 25th birthday. Do I think $1,000 is a good price to record a thousand pages of an audiobook? 
Uh, no, I don't. That's like a dollar a page. Are you kidding me? That sounds really cheap. Really, really cheap. And especially, it depends how much content is on each page as well. But, uh, ah, yeah, took a wrong turn. Adobe Audition Extraordinaire, says Paul. Well, thank you, Paul. Right, I know where I'm supposed to be going. I can see other people have made the same mistake. It's not easy to actually find the trail, the exact trail you want to get on. What have we got here? Uh, can you make songs with different tempo, changing the BPM over in Adobe Audition? I had to use Logic Pro to achieve that. Uh, yeah, well, Logic does make it easy to do all that kind of flexing and time stretching, uh, but you can certainly achieve it in Adobe Audition. And if you search through uh, some of the old videos on my YouTube channel, you will find uh, some great uh, BPM and beat mixing uh, tutorials that you might want to check out. We're going to have a real celebration of audio, though, come the end of the month um, with 25 years of Adobe Audition. So you might already have seen, I've announced that I'm going to be hosting the Adobe Audition podcast. First episode will be out on May 29th. Uh, so make sure to get this date in your diary, interviewing really awesome power users of the software. And believe me, I've spoken to some amazing minds, uh, including obviously head of audio at Adobe, uh, Duran Gleaves, principal worldwide evangelist, Jason Levine will be joining me. I've got Mike Dawson. He's the sound engineer for the Adam Carolla show, which is pretty cool stuff. Uh, Frank Serafini, an Oscar winning Hollywood producer and sound mixer. Um, loads and loads. Got uh, some voice artists, including a couple from MRC as well. Watch out for the snakes. <laughs> Would be nice if Adobe had some freebies on that day. Aha, aha, my friend. That is where you want to make sure you're sticking around and subscribing to this here YouTube channel. Um, because on May 29th, we commence, this is one of the biggest uh, celebrations around the 25th birthday of Adobe Audition. Uh, we will be launching the awesome audio giveaway. And I really hope that you'll be able to join me for that and uh, get yourself entered into that contest. Just getting it set up now. Uh, we already have on board some fantastic providers. We're gonna try and get lots of freebies uh, for everyone who enters that giveaway. Uh, so whether you win or not, you should get some really cool freebies you can, uh, you can start using in your audio creations. Uh, stuff like um, plugins and uh, free podcast hosting and what else? Uh, yeah, we're working out a few other bits and bobs, so uh, make sure you stick around for that. Um, but the overall winner is going to win gear, which I'm going to be reviewing here on my YouTube channel, including stuff from Focusrite uh, for audio interfaces, Heil Sound uh, for microphones. We've teamed up with Soundcraft to get you a cool mixing desk. Yes, the mixing desk that I have. <laughs> so it is good. You can, uh, you can take my word for that. Uh, oh, look, are they forget me not down there. Can you see them? Hang on. Let me see if I can spin the camera around and show you. Forget-me-nots, forget-me-nots. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Isn't it great? Absolutely love it. Love being out in nature. So uh, who else have we teamed up with? Isotope uh, to get you, uh, well, I guess I can tell you this now, I'll give you a little teaser. Teamed up with Isotope to get the 082N uh, mastering and mixing package. Jason says, uh, oh, hang on, I missed your comment, Jason. Uh, but maybe if someone else comments, it usually refreshes. Oh, and actually I can push that button. That should bring the comments up. Aha. Yeah. Okay, cool. When you just sit down to mess around with audio for fun, what's your favorite things to do? Uh, Daniel says, waves of Israel. Yes, absolutely. Do you know what, Daniel? I would love to do some work or some collaboration with waves, um, but I'm struggling to find a contact there. So if you know anyone or if anyone watching here is from waves, uh, please do get in touch. I love, I absolutely love Waves Audio plugins. I, I've got most of them. <laughs> I've been collecting them uh, like a, a fanatic over the years. Um, so yeah, if, if you're able to help or somehow make that connection, that would be fantastic. Uh, really, really good. Uh, so yeah, we've got, like I said, we've got plugins, we've got gear. Uh, what else? I'm thinking on the fly here. Obviously there'll be something from Music Radio Creative. We've teamed up with uh, Epidemic Music as well to get you some cool uh, music tracks for your uh, audio creations or YouTube channels, all royalty free, of course. Uh, so really, really cool stuff. One phone call away. Daniel, do you work for Waves? If you do, definitely uh, let me know your contact details or uh, drop me an email over to mike at musicradiocreative.com. Would love to continue the conversation on that. 
Do you use Android app for recording audio? Uh, no, no, not really. I've, um, I've got the uh, Samsung voice recorder on my uh, Samsung Galaxy S8 and it's pretty, pretty good. I like it. Uh, just downloaded it recently and it's got a cool thing where it uses both microphones on each end of your Samsung S8 smartphone so you can record interview style and that really does work out very well indeed. So yeah, big fan of, uh, of everything there. You can actually get a Rode app uh, to use the Rode Smart Lab Plus that I'm using. So that's another cool thing that I really like. So yeah, May 29, get it in your diary, in your calendar now. Um, because there's going to be loads of content on here, including a few more live streams, which I'm looking forward to. And uh, yeah, if you go to mrc.fm slash giveaway right now, you'll be able to sign up to uh, express your interest. I've been speaking with Waves there in Knoxville also. We'll email you, Paul, thank you for the connection. That would be awesome. Uh, oh, let's have a look at that one there from Daniel. Can you put the mic inside your shirt? Am I starting to get a little bit of... Um, wind noise and wind rumble how's it sounding uh do let me know because maybe uh maybe it's time to uh to put the microphone somewhere it's not going to get blown around that would be an awesome idea so here we are somebody has very kindly donated a gate which is lovely just going to open the uh the kissing gate i do get wind i'm definitely going to watch this back uh when i finish this live stream and uh, yeah, maybe make a few adjustments uh, based on the quality of the audio. Used to be a sound man. Okay, do you know what? I'm going to stop here now and I'm going to attempt to uh, put this Rode Smart Lab inside my t shirt so that we can get better audio quality. Uh, so let's take that off and see if I can pop this inside. And you tell me if this is going to be any better. Hopefully, it will be. All right, that's now inside my shirt. How's that sounding? Let me know in the comments if you can still hear me clearly or has that muffled everything? How's that sounding to you? Hopefully that is going to uh, nicely reduce any of that, uh, that wind rumble that I was getting just a moment ago. Many of you have said the uh, stick it like this better. Yeah, so that's looking good now. It's completely hidden underneath my shirt. It's good, better. Hey, it worked. Definitely looking for some gimbal suggestions then. If you guys have got any uh, gimbal suggestions uh, to stabilize uh, my video, I'm particularly interested in getting that. Oh good, right, okay, that's the trick then to actually plant this underneath a t-shirt. Thank you for the advice, Daniel. Really, really appreciate that. And for those of you that uh, gave some feedback to say it's sounding solid, sounding good. All right, now we're just getting to another path that I believe is gonna take us out into the village of Nettlestone on the Isle of Wight, which is really good. Might actually get to a main road and I'll try and find a way of walking uh, down to the beach if I can, so I can nicely kind of finish this live stream down on the beach, that'd be quite nice. Hey Daniel, that's cool, you used to do feature films. I remember you telling me that actually when you, uh, when you uh, called into my live show, uh, when I was uh, doing a live show from the studio. Uh, Manish, I'm using the Samsung Galaxy S8 uh, to bring you this live footage right now. So yeah, it's cool, isn't it? So much nature all around. And brilliant for topping up your inspiration and getting inspired as well. Work on the BBC movie they made about Eli Cohen, the Israeli spy, wow. Very cool stuff you've been up to there, Daniel. Manish, you're absolutely welcome. My pleasure. Wearing welly boots today. Don't know if you can see them down there. Uh, don't really need them. It's not that muddy anymore. The sun is drying up all the mud. We've had a really good spell of weather just recently, which is good. So yeah, if you've got any questions, I've been answering uh, some questions earlier about uh, Premiere Pro and working with audio. Uh, it's just getting super slick now. Your ability to edit uh, audio from Premiere directly inside Audition and then just take it back and uh, work seamlessly 
inside Premier the app is pretty amazing. I really like it. So you want to take a look at this hill? Looking like. <laughs> We'll head out, and I believe I'm coming up to a main road up here. With me, is what the 4G signal has been as I've been hopping around different parts of the Isle of Wight streaming to you. Is it broken up or cut out at all at any point, or are we still remaining particularly good? Hopefully particularly good. All right. Southern Gas Networks. <laughs> That's where the gas comes from. And it's really cool, actually. I uh, don't know whether I'll cross it on this talk, but uh, they have a beautiful 4G antenna uh, just near where I am. And um, it's uh, disguised as a tree. It was cut off for a bit, says Daniel. Right, yeah. I had a feeling that it wasn't going to be solid all the time, but as long as you're there, I guess whenever I see the comments dying down, that's probably when I'm going through a patchy part. But the YouTube app doesn't actually tell me that I've cut out. It just stays active um, with no real warning. So I guess that's all right. <laughs> I'll be able to watch, obviously, on the replay to see exactly what the quality of this is like. So here we are, coming to a main road now. I'm just going to cross over. Walk on down to the beach, which will be nice. Because the beach is very nice. We like the beach. Here you go, that's the village of Nettlestone just up there. And I'm going to head down via the public footpath uh, to the wonderful Notes Point and Priory Bay. Those beaches are amazing. Although it does depend upon tide times as to uh, whether I'll actually be able to get round the whole beach area down there. So I'll keep you posted. But for now, walking through the beautiful little village of Nettlestone. What is the difference between WAV and FLAC file audio format? Uh, the answer is actually not that much. Uh, it just depends. WAV is obviously more prolific. Uh, it's the most popular lossless style audio format. Um, but FLAC is a very good lossless format too, and a lot of audio purists like to use it, uh, particularly for consuming music. Uh, so yeah, take your pick. It's the same as WAV versus AIF, I -I -A -I -F -F, which again is uh, designed by Apple uh, to give you another form of lossless audio file. And again, if you're using software like Logic or GarageBand, you may well find that you're saving and exporting in AIFF instead of WAV, WAVE. So there you go. But yeah, just take your pick. If I had a choice, I'd always choose to wake in WAV uh, rather than anything else. It's just, uh, for me, I find that to be the best, the easiest and the most compatible. Although what I have had a problem with uh, when sharing around, around audio files uh, is the bit rate that you encode in. So, for instance, I would always do my best to, when I'm saving the final mix to send off to a client, for instance, from MRC, I'd always save in 16-bit, even though Adobe Audition can work in up to 32-bit. Uh, so the reason it's good to work in 32-bit is because if you distort and go over 0 dB, uh, there's some very clever mathematics going on behind the scenes that kind of save you uh, from any kind of clipping or anything like that, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, when you uh, export to send to clients, you definitely want to be exporting in 16-bit. That is the most important thing to do um, because some software like DJ software and stuff like that, it cannot accept 32-bit audio. So you need to, uh, you just basically need to keep an eye out for that. We've had uh, emails back from clients who've said, yeah, I got your WAV file or your MP3 and I can't play it back on my DJ software. Uh, so yeah, something to bear in mind. They're going into bit rates. And uh, actually recently on my live stream, I did a replay of a video I made a while ago, uh, all about 32-bit versus 16-bit audio and why you should always be working in 32-bit, uh, but generally for cross-compatibility, uh, you want to look at 16-bit. 
Uh, how you got your experience? What is your study? That's a really good question. Uh, so as I was mentioning at the start of this live stream, my study really started in the radio industry. Uh, so I got, I kind of, yeah, cut my teeth, if you like, working in the production studios of many different radio stations. Uh, and also I was uh, super privileged and grateful to uh, work with some great uh, folks, some great mentors who really uh, gave me some really good advice on how to get started and how to do things in radio, uh, particularly in the, uh, in the way of tweaking your audio quality and stuff like that, making good sound effects. But of course, most of the stuff I started with uh, were real analog boxes. And now, of course, all of that stuff, all of those tweaks and controls and knobs are inside your DAW, uh, your digital audio workstation. Can we record audio in WAV format in Android? Hey, that's a great question. Do you know what? I've never tried to do that, but I'm sure there must be some app you can download uh, for Android that would allow you to do uh, a WAV file. I know MP3 is the favored format, um, but yeah, take a look. You never know what you'll find. Um, but yeah, it would be good to do WAV, and I'm sure absolutely it's possible uh, to do that. So you just need to find the right app that's going to be relevant for you, and, uh, and then basically go for it, yeah. But I haven't looked into that myself, so it's definitely something I'm going to need to take a look into. All right. Here we go, just to let you know where I am, if you want to look it up on a map, I am at Gully Road. Is that back to front, by the way, for you? Is my video coming up back to front or uh, like you're looking through a mirror with all the words reversed? Curious if uh, selfie shooting does that. Uh, RecForge is an app that can record WAV for Android. There you go, Ranka. Thank you very much for the suggestion. That is super, super helpful. <laughs> By the way, I don't know how many of you watching now uh, like to watch over your fitness and your health, um, but I certainly do. I do an, uh, 30 minutes on the treadmill every morning without fail. It is correctly oriented for reading. That's good to hear. Thank you, kind deal. Uh, kind dead, even. Kind dead corpses, what a name. <laughs> so yeah, in order to keep track, I like to quantify as much as possible, uh, including wearing, uh, well, I used to have the Apple Watch now. I have Android Wear, uh, which is really good for counting steps, BPM, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, I'm also on Strava as well. So uh, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm actually recording my uh, route that I'm taking on this uh, journey on Strava. So I'm not sure if I've got a URL, but you can definitely follow me over on Strava. Just look up Mike Russell and you should find me there. If you're interested in the kind of walks that I do on the Isle of Wight, <laughs> maybe one day you will come here yourself and you can explore uh, these great footpaths and forests and beaches. It really is a brilliant place to live. I really like the Isle of Wight. Um, so yeah, the Strava, and yeah, I, I think as audio producers, audio creators, whatever you want to call us, people who sit uh, in studios for a long amount of time, uh, we do need to look after our health. Um, just recently I found a company in the UK called Thriver, uh, T-H-R-I-V-A dot C-O dot co, Thriver dot co, and on their website you can order uh, a blood testing kit and what you have to do is you have to prick your finger and uh, just fill up a tube, tube with some of your blood and send it through the mail. I know, it's charming isn't it? Uh, then they give you back all your results like your cholesterol, your vitamin D, your vitamin B12, uh, your liver function. It's really cool and it tells you if there's anything you need to watch, what you can do about it. So again that's another thing. I don't want to use a morbid example um, but obviously uh, lost way too young and way too soon, uh, Avicii, Tim. Uh, and obviously I, all I can understand is the same as the rest of you can understand uh, by reading the reports and reading the papers and whatever. Um, and from what I understand, he was uh, pushing himself really hard as many of us do, you know, in this industry. We, the temptation is to go all day and all night and keep going until you're burnt out and survive, you know, on a diet of burgers and fries and energy drinks, fizzy drinks, but you know, we've only got so much that our bodies can take, I guess, before they just go pop and they say no more. Uh, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer of doing what I can to get out, particularly in this industry of cre creativity, um, where it isn't always easy. And you know, we can't always come up with the work and the goods all the time. Some of it you just have to leave to the muse. 
you know, to the energy around you. And uh, if the energy isn't present at that particular moment, don't, uh, don't fret about it, don't worry about it. Even though it is easy to fret and worry and think, I'm never going to be creative again. I can't make a single sweeper, you know. I can't do this voiceover. Um, you know, it will all come and we, we all have, particularly I think in the creative industry, these peaks and these dips. All right, look at this. Now that is a signpost and a half, isn't it? There's one, two, three, four, five different signs on there. And you know what? I think I'm going to follow the coastal path. I'm going to take you along the coastal path. Why am I going to do that? Because it will take you to the beach. So let's go. Uh, yeah, and you know, you can't be on the Isle of Wight and go for a walk without hitting the beach at some point. It's, uh, it's small enough as an island that you have to hit the beach at some point. Uh, I just wanted to check in, by the way. I don't know if there's a way I can look. I cannot see what my cell signal... Oh yeah, no, my cell signal is full. Uh, so yeah, you should be able to um, uh, receive this nicely. And if you do want to ask some questions, stick them in the comments. More than happy to answer any question that may be on your mind. Hi. Hi there. That's uh, Antoan. Antoan, nice to see you there. Thanks for tuning in. Do spread the word, by the way, if you're enjoying uh, this live stream. I'll share it with someone else who you think might benefit from watching. Do I know Derek the Bandit? No, I don't. <laughs> who is Derek the Bandit? I apologize, by the way, if the uh, stability of this live stream isn't quite uh, what it should be, but uh, I'm definitely looking into getting a gimbal so I can make these live streams better in the future. Although I will tell you one thing, uh, holding just this selfie stick feels like I'm carrying a concrete block around with me. <laughs> I'm starting to get pins and needles in this hand, so I'm going to kind of swap hands over now. But it's all a learning process, isn't it? So going back to what I was talking about earlier about um, live streaming and doing more of that, because I know a lot of you miss the one hour long live streams that I used to do, uh, where I talk about audio and audio production definitely thinking about bringing something like that back. I think it would be really beneficial uh, to do something like that. Uh, maybe it will be something like this where I'll walk around uh, and talk to you because one of my favorite activities outside the studio to do is walking. Uh, and we can have a kind of Q&A on the go kind of session, uh, which might be quite nice. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. And uh, Obviously, when we celebrate the 25th birthday of Adobe Audition, I'm going to be looking to do a few more live streams. So all of that and more is coming up. Now, I don't know if anyone can look up for me uh, while I'm live streaming currently uh, the tide times for Seagrove Bay on the Isle of Wight. Uh, Seagrove Bay. If anyone can look up when the, uh, the high and the low tide times are for Seagrove Bay, Isle of Wight, I'd be super grateful. Um, because if we're heading towards a low tide, I can actually take you right along the beach. I don't think you have to do it daily like you did last time, uh, but once or twice a week might be good. Good idea. A great dance DJ also on the Isle of Wight. Hey! No, I don't know Derek the Bandit. I am familiar with, although I don't know him personally. I do know Derek Sandy, who's a, uh, a great uh, kind of reggae style singer, I guess you could say, uh, based here on the Isle of Wight. Uh, often gets out, I think I saw him last at the old Gaffers Festival a few years ago in, in Yarmouth over in West White. So yeah, I know there's a bit of a delay on this stream, but if anyone can pick up the tide time for uh, either Seagrove Bay or, or Benbridge uh, around that area, or Ride, R-Y-D-E, Ride Isle of Wight, if you can pick up the tide time and post it up in the comments. Just let me know when the low and high is. Low tide was at 12.41. Ooh, then we might be lucky if I run. Uh, I might be able to get through the whole of the beach because when it's high tide, uh, there's no hope. <laughs> so it might be we can have a nice walk back along the beach, which would be really nice. And I can show you, actually, this is my favorite coastal walk on the whole of the island. Uh, so yeah, let's go down this big hill and have a look. That's really good to, he to hear, actually. Should we go with any audio device or dubbing is the best option? Uh, so what do you mean by that? Do you mean, are we talking here about um, high tide of 6.34 in the evening? Um, right, I'm not quite sure what you mean about is dubbing the only option. So you'll have to sort of uh, enhance a little bit on your question there. Where on earth is this nice place? This is the Isle of Wight in the UK, as far south as you can go before you hit France. That's why the weather is so good. 
And uh, yeah, it is beautiful. I really love where I live. I was about to ask about the place too, uh, says uh, German. Nice to see you. And there you can see we're still on the coastal path. So let's head down here and I'll take you down to Seagrove Bay, which is probably my favorite beach on the whole of the Isle of Wight. And the reason I love Seagrove Bay so much is the tourists don't know about it. <laughs> so even at this time of year, I mean, I'll take you down there now. It's a beautifully sunny day here uh, at the start of May where, you know, we're starting to head into the height of the season. And I reckon if it's a day like most days, there'll be hardly anyone down there, which is why I love that beach. I love it, you know, when I'm at a conference or around people, it's nice to be around people. But when I'm on a walk in nature, I like solitude. <laughs> I like nothing better than solitude and being away from people uh, when I'm going on a walk, apart from you, of course, virtually. Have I ever built a studio door? What a great question. No, no, I'm not, I'm not that skilled in carpentry. Do a bit of DIY around the house, so yeah. But never, never gone as far as building a studio door. No, they're huge beasts, aren't they? Massive. If you're talking about sound isolation. I'm busy with one and it's the hardest audio project ever. Well, you have to let me know how you go with that. Are you posting any kind of deets of that online? You, you should make a video of it and put it up on YouTube. Got here, box footage photography. So look, just down here, I'm beginning to finish now. So as you can see, this beach is pretty much deserted and that's what it's like usually most of the year, which is why I love Seagrove Bay so much. Right? It's amazing. I just had a message there on my app saying it was reconnecting. So I hope that uh, you didn't lose too much of my approach on Seagrove Bay, but I think I'm back with you now. So yeah, I mean, you can see why I like Seagrove Bay, right? Look at this beach. It is like, you know, probably nearly 18 degrees here on the Isle of Wight. And there's like two or three people here. This is, this is my kind of beach. <laughs> Apart from when I go on holiday once a year to France. Then the beach is packed, but in a nice way. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. Seriously. Are you kidding me? This is amazing, right? <laughs> Do I live in the best place in the world or what? Seriously. Oh, by the way, that, that house behind me, I'm eyeing up that house. It's even got a separate outbuilding there, which could be a studio. And it has this view. Just saying. <laughs> wow, what a cool beach. So yeah, Seagrove Bay, dog swimming, yeah. Incredible. But hey, it's just between you and me, all right? Don't go telling everyone about this beach, yeah? Don't want everyone to take it over. Just you watching now, you can come here. Let me come on over to the Isle of Wight and we'll get a coffee, talk audio together. And we can come and hang out at Seagrove Bay. Which by the way, is just around the corner from uh, Sea View, a uh, beautiful village on the Isle of Wight. And it's just full of coffee shops and just pleasantries like that. So yeah, definitely a good place to catch a coffee if you come to the Isle of Wight. Sea view, I would recommend. Right, so the tide uh, was low about an hour ago. I'm hoping that I will be able to make it round. I can see the tide is already starting to come in with a vengeance. So I don't know if I'll be able to make it round. But I can definitely go up here and take you round, hopefully to Priory Bay, which is also Actually, Priory Bay, I would say, is probably even better and even more private than Seagrove Bay. Uh, this place is nice, but just you wait until I take you around the corner uh, to Priory Bay, which is really, really nice. Gorgeous place. Just to sit and take it all in, enjoy life, reflect, reconnect. Amazing, right? Love it. They have recently been building some new bits and bobs here, so you can look at that, so you can cross over uh, without any worries, even during a high tide. So how many of you watching now attempted to come to the Isle of Wight? See, this is the other idea, having uh, some kind of audio boot camp on the Isle of Wight, right? Put up your hand if, um, if I was to say right now, Book your place and come on an audio boot camp to the Isle of Wight. How many of you would actually pull your credit card out right now? And if enough of you say, yes, me, uh, then it's something that may well happen in the future. Right now, it can go this way and you can just see down there, there are a few people just, uh, just coming up. Can you see, just exploring through the rocks there? But I'm gonna take you another way and this goes through the forest. So uh, let's go that way, lots of green that way. 
So let's go up those steps. This is public footpath R89. And uh, yeah, if this live streaming goes well, and uh, I do a little bit more of it, maybe, just maybe, I will take you over to the west of the island, which is amazing. Such a cool place. Right. There you go, we're at Horstone Point, part of the National Trust. And it's always nice to know the National Trust are looking after a place because you know it's going to be well maintained and well looked after. This is so crazy cool, a nice bit of welcome shade actually, just, just by the beach which is in the background there. I've got to find my way now. Let me know in the comments if you're still with me by the way. Uh, it's tough to keep an eye on how the uh, 4G signal is doing, so how well uh, this is getting to you. Hang on, I'm just going to take you out to this little vantage point. It's Priory Bay. Right now, live. Ah, Manish, I hope it's reconnecting okay. I seem to be back now, which is good. This is Priory Bay. I had a feeling you might like this. Isn't it nice? Good. Life is good. So I think I could be doing much smoother pans if I had a gimbal. That's, a, that's my plan. But anyway, you get the idea, right? Really, really like it. Such an awesome spot. So yeah, if you've got any other questions you would like to ask right now related to audio, we've already covered uh, topics such as WAV files, 32-bit versus 16-bit, working inside Premiere Pro and more. And of course, the awesome audio giveaway, which is coming up uh, at the end of this month, May 29. Uh, make sure you go and pre-register your interest now at mrc.fm/giveaway. That's mrc.fm slash giveaway. And then I can know that you're ready in a new age where we face GDPR regulations. So I've got to make sure you are super interested uh, before I email you the information of that giveaway. Uh, so there you go, right. Let's get round here and down here and onto the beach. I think the DJI Osmo is the gimbal you'll need. I don't have one, but I've heard good things. Hey, thank you for the advice. I was actually checking out the DJI Osmo earlier on, so perhaps that will uh, the gimbal that I go for. That's smartphone only. I was thinking of getting one for a DSLR as well. It's pretty obvious that technology is not needed in the area you're in. Absolutely right. Although saying that, I was in the Rocky Mountains uh, just a couple of days ago when I was in Canada for Pod Summit, and they've got full 4G signals over in the Rockies. It's crazy, right? And don't even get me started on 5G. Don't even get me started on 5G. That much is to be said uh, that 5G is simply going to take over the world. All right. Well, hopefully the signal is somehow holding out. This is just amazing. I hope you're enjoying this virtually as much as I am enjoying this in real life. What a cool place to live, huh? I can notice in the, uh, the video that I'm getting, uh, there are a few shakes as I'm walking. I guess that's to be expected. As you can see, you, you can see why I love these, these two beaches. There is just like literally no one. There's like, I can see there's a couple of people hiding in the bushes. But apart from that, we have the beach to ourselves. <laughs> and this is the Isle of Wight in the UK, which I gotta say is pretty stunning, right? Pretty awesome. So that's what I get up to when I'm not in the studio recording. And I deliberately chose this place as a place to live uh, just because it's got everything I want in life, including surfing. I think at some point I'm gonna have to don the wetsuit and uh, get into the water over at Compton Bay here on the island. 
and try out a little bit of surfing. I've done loads in Australia, um, but yeah, just the opportunity to do it here on the island would be great. Is there another choice instead of waves filter in Adobe Audition? I need a free filter in the same quality. Waves filter, I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Are you referring to a plugin from Waves Audio or something different? I don't know. You let me know. Um, how much time do you take out of the studio roughly? That's a really good question. So it all depends how I'm feeling uh, mood wise and creativity wise. You know, you get those times where you're in the zone and you just like straight away, your brain tells you first thing in the morning, right, I need to do this, this and this. And then you do it. So I can have days where I spend all day in the studio, even on a beautiful day like this. And then I can have other days where I'm not having any of it and I just get outside. So it varies, but on average, I don't know, anything between three to six hours. I try not to spend more time, um, you know, in intensive work, because I think life is too short, really. And, you know, we're all on this planet to, uh, to have an experience, aren't we? To, uh, to be all that we can be, to be the best version of ourselves. So, you know, while there is a time and a place for sitting in the studio, creating and emailing and doing all those kind of cool follow up and chase up things, it's uh, life is about more than that. In my opinion, life is about experiences and memories, not stuff. Even though it's nice to have stuff to up, up your vlogging game and everything, like I'm looking into right now. Is there any tube to the Isle of Wight? What a great question. Uh, no, the only kind of public transport you can take to get over to our lovely island is uh, the ferry. That's the only way you can get on and off the island. Unless you have your own uh, private micro light or jet, and then you can fly into one of our two airports but they're not commercial airports. They're, um, they're just for private, uh, I guess, charter and uh, yeah, micro lights. A lot of micro lights will fly in from uh, you know, the mainland. And uh, I actually took a micro light lesson, which is a really cool thing I did a couple of years ago for my birthday. Isabella bought, bought it for me as a present, the opportunity to go up in a micro light and fly one. And I did, and it was just amazing. And maybe one day I'll pursue that a little bit further because uh, the guy who was training me at Sandown Airport here on the Isle of Wight, uh, said to me, well, one of the coolest things about being able to fly a micro light and get your own license is that you can be in Paris in two and a half hours from the Isle of Wight, which is awesome. What about getting around? Is it a huge place? It's 26 miles by 13 miles. Uh, so pretty small. You can't really drive for more than 45 minutes on the Isle of Wight. That's like the biggest journey you can do before you start heading back on yourself. Um, in terms of public transport here, there are buses very well run buses actually if not a little pricey but very well run and uh obviously you've got the uh, the island line train as well um and that goes all the way from ride down to shanklin straight down the middle of the east of the island uh and it's more of a novelty thing really than i think uh, a method of public transport unless you happen to live on one of the uh, the stops and work at the other another stop on the, uh, the island line. It's definitely a novelty that a lot of tourists like to experience when they come over here to the Isle of Wight. And to make it even more exciting, um, the train or trains that run on the island line, they're old 1930s uh, sort of pre-war uh, tube trains. So from, from the London Underground. So that's a really, really cool and interesting experience if you ever get here to the Isle of Wight uh, to take. But I always say the Isle of Wight really has a bit of everything certainly in terms of life. Hey, thanks, Jesus. Saying cool. I appreciate that. Uh, it's got everything you could want from a place in the UK. Plus, if you want to experience some of the real UK, like what I believe is the real true UK, come here to the islands because it's just, it has got everything. There is St. Helens Fort. I don't know if you can see it. It is there, St. Helens Fort. Once a year, the tide is low enough that you can walk right out to it. And there's a kind of ritual where people do that once a year and they fly drones over it. I'm a video editor. Previously, uh, follow your tutorial, give me growth, a job in editing in the industry. Now these days, I am able to perfectly work with audio issues. So thank you so much. Hey, it's my pleasure. And I'm glad that you've got some benefits uh, from watching my channel. All right, as you can see, it's super deserted around here. Now. The rocks over there, let me turn this round and show you, the rocks over there are usually easy to traverse at low tide, but the tide is heading up now, so let's see if I can make it over those rocks or not. The tide is definitely getting high. 
I need to be careful not to get caught in the tide. That's one of the most common things that happens. Hi from Tunisia, nice to see you. Yeah, that's one of the most common call outs for the, uh, the Coast Guard here on the Isle of Wight, people getting stuck when the tide's coming in. <laughs> so, well, at least if I get stuck, I've got you guys to keep me company. As you can see, the tide is getting dangerously close to those rocks now. So, let's see if there's a way around or not. Definitely glad I got my wellies on to trudge through some of this water though. Otherwise we might have to find another alternative route to get round. But at least you're experiencing the beautiful Isle of Wight. And behind me is Portsmouth in the mainland. You should be able to see all the towers and skyscrapers in the distance there. That's Portsmouth and mainland UK over there. Now let's see, am I going to be doing some scrabbling over rocks? This is where a gimbal would come in super handy. Hey there, Captures Music, nice to see you. Time to swim, yeah. <laughs> That's something I might need to do. There's a big container ship there in the distance, probably coming from China, docking at Southampton, I would imagine. Let's see if we can get round here. Signal still good, let me know in the uh, comments if the signal is still looking good. But I'm hoping it's looking good. No more buffering. We don't like buffering. It's just looking back. Wow, how much of the ambience are you picking up? Are you hearing these waves rolling in? Curious as to how sensitive the road mic is that I'm using. All right, let's get through this tree. Just about. But in terms of gimbal and microphone, perhaps I need to up my game uh, before the next time I bring you a vlog style video like this. Let's see how we get on around these rocks. Am I going to be able to get round? It's looking like I might need to scramble over the top. <laughs> so I'll take you with me. Otherwise, there is no way back. <laughs> Just got to be careful here because there's a lot of slippy seaweed to traverse but i'm kind of feeling lucky so let's go for it great sound so i'm located between priory bay and nodes point on the isle of wight just need to get through these rocks and i'll be out on the other side at st helen's beach <laughs> it's like i'm on a pokemon holiday yeah very cool huh hunting pokemon that was fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, getting in the pools now where lots of cockles and other bits. I think, you know, it's not too bad though. I think I'm gonna make it through. But uh, I think in about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, this will all be covered by water as the tide rolls in. I'm making good progress though. Let's just hope there are no tricky rocks. I'm in Gosport, the other side of the Solent, fantastic. Temperature is about, I'd say it's about 18 degrees now. Ah yes, definitely gonna make it through here, which is good. I can, I can see the other side now, but only just. And when I get to the other side, usually down on St. Helens Beach, they have a little cafe where you can get uh, ice cream from. It is really beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I'm making it to the other side, no worries. No need to call the Coast Guard. <laughs> I've made it safely to the other side of these rocks, which is always the, uh, the dodgy thing when you're uh, crossing when the tide is coming in. Because obviously high tide was about an hour or more ago, and that tide does come in really fast once it starts coming. So there's only a limited amount of time that you can actually make it round to the other side. And if you don't get round in time, you have to walk up to the top and go back via the fields. But it's always nice when you can uh, make it down here by the sand. Check out the Vine Inn. Hey, Daniel, do you know the Vine Inn? Have you been before? <laughs> Vine Inn is uh, it's up that way somewhere. So look at this, this is beautiful. Now I'm the other side. 
We're at a beach called Nodes Point now. Again, pretty deserted. <laughs> you can see why I love the Isle of Wight, right? <laughs> you know. In fact, this beach is usually busier um, because there's a huge, great uh, holiday camp uh, just up the way, just over there. So uh, yeah, often you will get people having barbecues here, holidays, going for a swim, and they do all kinds of adventure stuff as well. Picking places from the map. Where else would you recommend? If you look on the map, if you find a little cafe called Baywatch on the beach, that's where I'm heading to now. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of thinking it's ice cream time. Like I said, I try to stay pretty healthy, but an ice cream on a day like today after doing this kind of walk, are you kidding me? Yeah, pretty nice stuff. But again, as you can see, it's like blue sea, beautiful beach, nothing gets much better than this. Now, if I spin the camera around, I can point out a few landmarks from here. You see just over there is Bembridge and the church up there. I'm from India, New Delhi. Oh, thank you for the kind invitation to India. Sandan Airfield has an awesome barbecue pit, really. That's so cool, I didn't know that. Right, over there, sticking out, you might be able to see in the distance uh, Bembridge Lifeboat Station as well. That's another cool thing. You can walk right the way out there, beautiful views. Often photographers like to catch awesome sunset shots from there, which is nice. And just now we're getting towards the end of Nodes Point and towards the Baywatch on the Beach Cafe, uh, <laughs> which may well conclude this, this talk and this uh, live vlog. Like I say, I hope the quality has been really good and uh, definitely a gimbal is something I'm looking into. And I need something really that can stabilize me so I can carry around for long periods of time my smartphone uh, without feeling like my hand is going to drop off <laughs> or has pins and needles. By the way, I've got a lot of wind blowing in my face now, so I hope that the, uh, the mic placement of this lab is, uh, is helping to shield that wind uh, from disrupting the audio quality. So this is what I do as an audio producer when I'm not producing. Pretty spectacular, right? There you go, really good shot of St. Helens Fort there. That's right, Daniel's just posted the address of the Baywatch on the Beach Cafe. You can see the umbrellas are out today, which means they're open for business. Awesome. They have a nice little ice cream shop there. And you can pick up a tea or a coffee or whatever. They do like a Norwegian prawn sandwich as well with avocado slices. If that's your bag. That's pretty cool. And yeah, it's just an awesome place. And actually just behind uh, Baywatch on the Beach Cafe is a very famous part of uh, the St. Helens area called the Dover, which is obviously Daniel, as you notice, Dover Road. Am I still producing radio shows? Good question there. No, I'm not producing radio shows as much as I'm uh, creating video content and podcasts. And obviously, Music Radio Creative, we work now with uh, a large, large uh, majority of podcasters producing their podcast audio and making their show sound good. Basically doing everything after they've finished recording. We do the mixing and uh, producing to make the podcast sound as good as it possibly can. So yeah. So the Dover is nice. It used to be an old golf course back in the day. And now it's just a huge, huge field. And it is a beautiful sight to behold. That is for certain. This has been a great walk. I hope you've enjoyed coming with me. I'm gonna sign off probably in about uh, less than five minutes. So if you wanna ask any other questions, Anything else on your mind before I disappear, just feel free to let me know in the live chat. I'd love to have a soiree down there on Eve. If done respectfully, a bonfire, music, a few cold ones, it would be perfect. Got any advice for job roles, for audio editing, for stuff like you're doing in London? 
So yeah, I mean, the idea is to uh, just keep your eyes open for uh, things to do. Um, often companies will post online. You can go to some of the, some of the, uh, the media sites like uh, media.info is a good one. Uh, funnily enough, if you're in Canada, a really good site is Milkman Unlimited. Uh, there's a great site for the US called allaccess.com. Um, yeah, so find out what your local media job site is. But also remember that you can do all this stuff virtually now, so you don't need to be in London or New York or San Diego or anywhere, really. As long as you've got a good internet connection, you can be producing audio now on the go, which is one of the beauty uh, points of this, doing this kind of work. You know, all you need to do is upload WAV files. It's not even as much as uploading video files. Video files are a lot heftier. You're talking about gigs and gigs of data. There you need to be looking at super fast fiber, you know, gigabit fiber maybe. Um, but when it comes to audio, I mean, what are we looking at? 10 megabytes a minute or something like that? So that's not all that much, you know? Uh, you know, you really have to be producing a lot of audio uh, to create a file that is substantial in size. And even then, most internet connections can handle it pretty well. So, you know, as long as you have a reasonable internet connection, you should be all right. Uh, and you can send stuff off, as long as you can do that all quickly. And obviously live streaming, that's now a big part of things, isn't it? So you need to be able to handle streams that will take you to uh, different qualities, 1080p or 4K. Just check this out behind me. This is the, uh, the old church of St. Helens. And uh, it's pretty spooky, isn't it? Like, it's pretty strange. There's, a, there's an old myth about this church uh, and all kinds of strange stuff going on with it. Let's go and take a look over here. So it's the remains of a tower that was built in the 12th century. That is super old, like, feel that rock, right? That's amazing. So it's a derelict church now and the source of holy stones, apparently, uh, that sailors used to take and scrub the decks with them. Um, but I've got a, a little uh, book on ghost stories of the Isle of Wight. So apparently, uh, legend goes that uh, there were some uh, workmen that came over to restore this church and get it back to its original condition. And they went up to the top of the church and they started restoring it. And when they got up to the top of the church, this uh, old homeless looking man kind of confronted them. And they all kind of laughed and said, what are you doing here at the top of the church? And the old homeless man just looked back at them and said, you won't make it back to the other side of the Solent. And they never did get back home. It's very scary. Very, very scary stuff. So yeah, now it's used more as a C mark, I'd say, than anything else. Uh, right, what have we got here? What skills would I need to get uh, for a job as an audio engineer in the UK or Canada? Uh, really, your ability to use an audio editor is the best and most important skill you can get. Uh, yeah, we've worked on some games, some apps, uh, not so many films, uh, maybe some indie produced uh, documentaries and bits, uh, but no, motion picture, that's not something I've really delved into too much. So yeah, learn, pick an audio editor and become a master at it. Once you become a master at one audio editor, you will find it's pretty easy to pick up any other audio editor. Um, yeah, good ears is another good suggestion there from Daniel, definitely. Um, but yeah, learn the tricks of the trade, learn the basics of, uh, you know, what happens to audio when you're editing. So learn how a compressor works, learn how to set threshold, ratio, attack and release, learn what EQ does, learn the right frequencies all of that good stuff. And the, the good news is most of this stuff now you can do online. Most of this stuff, it's really easy to do just by, you know, picking up your favorite audio editor. Of course, I'd recommend Adobe Audition and then hop out to somewhere like YouTube and just, um, you know, go and pick up a few videos. Obviously, you know, you can pl find plenty of stuff on my channel, but if Adobe Audition isn't your bag, you can always hop into Logic Pro. Uh, I've been learning a lot from the music tech help guy on how to use Logic Pro. Fantastic piece of software, really like it. And he's got a great channel, so I watch some of his stuff and I'm not really that musical myself. So uh, to pick up some tips from him is great. And you're right, Audition does rock. So we're here, this is a uh, Baywatch on the Beach Cafe now. See the sign there? There you go behind me, Baywatch on the Beach. Uh, and usually they have a little ice cream hut here, which is open but not today. The ice cream hut is officially closed. No ice cream hut today. So that's the main cafe in here. This is the little hut just here that's closed up. And then I can take you away from the coast 
and towards the Dubber. And I think I'll end up by showing you the views over the Dubber because you might well appreciate that. But yeah, I hope this live stream has been uh, handy and of value to you. If you've got any suggestions for me uh, after this live stream ends, maybe you want to tweet me uh, by tweeting at iMikeRussell. That's at iMikeRussell. Just let me know some of your feedback on this stream and if there's anything you'd like to see in the future along these lines. How easy is it to switch from Audacity to Audition? Well, certainly when you switch away from Audacity towards Audition, you will find that things get a lot slicker. So actually you should find it uh, much easier. Certainly I find it easier to use Audition than switching to Audacity because I learned Adobe Audition first and I switched to Audacity and I was really struggling to, uh, to learn how the commands and moving things around works uh, because obviously it's a, uh, yeah, it is different um, making the switch. But uh, once you know the basics of one, I, you know, all the effects are called similar things. So you've still got a compressor, you've still got EQ. Um, you'll find that you do get some features inside Adobe Audition that you don't get inside Audacity, which is great. One of the glaring omissions I found when I was playing around with Audacity uh, was there was no noise gate. And I, I thought, well, surely a noise gate, that should, be, that should be something included by default. Let me just turn around so you can have a look. Uh, but alas, there was no native noise gate inside Audacity. Uh, so I had to download a third party .ny plugin, uh, which is a bit fiddly. And also one thing I find as well with Audacity uh, is it's really hard to preview stuff. So when you set an effect and you want to play back how that's gonna sound, it's really fiddly and difficult to do that. Um, another thing that I really like about Adobe Audition is the fact that you can actually open up what's called the preview window and that will allow you to look at how a WAV file is going to look before you make the edits. So say you're going to add some compression, you can see in real time how it's affecting things. Okay, we got Marta saying greetings from Spain. Do you know any local free big booths for voice acting instead of demonstrate studios? That is a good question. Uh, no, I don't, but uh, I think your best bet is to, uh, is to go online and have a look. Just search for voiceover or recording studios. One tip I would give you is uh, why not reach out to your local radio station? L local radio stations spend a lot of money on creating broadcast quality studios and it is very rare in my experience of working in radio that those studios are at full capacity all the time. So even if it's not something that's out there as uh, an advertised service by your local radio station, I would definitely ask, I would definitely inquire um, because more likely than not, it'll be the case that they'll welcome you with open arms and you may be able to negotiate yourself uh, a nice rate or a nice discounted rate. And who knows if you, uh, if you offer to promote them or promote their services to other audio specialists or producers or podcasters, uh, you know, you might be able to work something out really nice with them uh, to be able to get something uh, for you to do that. If that's what I assume you're talking about, uh, then definitely reaching out to your local radio station is a brilliant idea. Um, because yeah, they have studios that are not always in use, particularly if you want to use them at weekends or off-peak times like evenings. They usually have lots of availability there. And like I say, they will, op they will welcome you with open arms. So that would be my opinion on that. And obviously, anywhere you go pretty much in the world now, you'll find a radio station that's ready and willing uh, to lend you their facilities that are broadcast quality. So there you go. So let's take a look. I think I've got another comment. I'm just gonna show you, show you this beautiful view. Take a look at the comment. Peter says, have you ever felt nervous or awkward talking to camera in public? I find it such a big hurdle to overcome. Is it just a case of practice? Well, Peter, you're absolutely right. It is a case of practice, getting used to things, being in front of the camera. It, it can feel super awkward at times doing it, but what I would say is just get in front of the camera as much as you can, practice, get your experience in, and enjoy doing it. And after a while, you know, you may never lose the nerves. You may find that you always have nerves when you're getting in front of a camera. Um, but as long as you can turn that nervous energy into excited energy, uh, then that would be my advice for you. And, and the best thing is just to do it, just to get out there and give it a go. Because then once you have tried once, you will find uh, that you'll probably get the bug for it. And if you don't get the bug for it, then just stop and don't do it anymore. <laughs> hey, it's my pleasure, Daniel. I, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this live walk, just taking you around one of my favorite spots on the island nature walks we, we've covered fields we've covered beaches we've covered a beautiful open dava here as well which is lovely i went past the cafe as well so i think as we get to uh nearly 90 minutes on this walk i'm going to 
pretty much can this around here, but thank you for all the questions as well. And like I say, if it's something I can help with in the future uh, and provide more information on, uh, then yeah, I may well be doing more of these talks because I really like a talk and a walk. And if I can get a gimbal and make it a super smooth experience for you and make the audio sound good, uh, then I'm all up for doing it. If I can do it well, uh, then I will definitely do more of this. And if I can make it happen and get enough battery power, uh, I'm doing an all day walk uh, this weekend. Uh, it's going to be Walk the White, uh, which is a super long walk across the island. And uh, yeah, it may well be something uh, that I could take you on and we can have a chat for nearly eight hours as I walk across the island. But hopefully I remember my backpack and some water so I can stay hydrated um, because that is definitely something that I will need. So thank you. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Daniel, for all the kind comments and for sticking with me during this talk. I hope you make the best out of your day and go on to create amazing sounding audio. And like I say, if there's anything I can help with, uh, just reach out to me, send me a tweet at iMikeRussell. Or oh, I tell you what, just before I sign off, in the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna to get to the top here and I'll end up with uh, one of my favorite viewpoints on the island, which is just at the top of this uh, steep incline. You can look back and see the beach from a couple of chairs at the top. It really is a sight to behold. So let's get up there. And we'll take a look back in just a minute and then I will sign off from this stream. 90 minutes of walking, being outside, absorbing the sun, vitamin D, listening to the birds tweet, chatting with you, which is always good. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, German. Thanks, it's too easy. We're nearly there at the top now. And then I can show you. And hopefully the times when the stream did buffer a little bit, uh, you didn't lose too much. <laughs> Got questions, take a walk. I like that. It's a good idea for the name of the show. Life of an audio producer, life of a content creator. I don't know, I'll have to have a muse and a little think on that and see what comes to me. Or if you have suggestions, let's work something out. Maybe I can do one of these a week. Maybe one live walking around and one live from the studio where we get down to the nitty gritty of audio editing. Something like that might be good. Let's see what we can work out. All right, nearly coming up on bang, 90 minutes. Be nice to end on the 90 minute mark. So let me take you up here to the top and I'll show you those two chairs. They are there by another great and mighty oak tree. Let's go and sit down and I'll give you the view from those chairs, at which point I will end this live stream. Whoa, again, thank you very, very much for joining me on this beautiful day for a live stream from the Isle of Wight. And let's hope it's not too long before I do another live stream just like this one. Fantastic.